kidneys baking, grudges baking, doors and bacon, stricken bacon, crunch and bacon, ringers bacon, unsmoke bacon, dick by bacon, kidneys baking, grudges bacon, doors and bacon, stricken bacon, crunch and bacon, repeat, unsmoke bacon, dick by bacon. So it really is a fantastic ruin um, that that has a lot of value to to the Swedes because the king used to live here a couple of hundred years ago or something. I'm not exactly sure about the story, but look at the view. There's one thing that's really interesting that's still kept uh, well in order, which is this place right here. I'm going to walk you in. It's actually a bit dark and a bit weird. It's like the dungeon where they put people who, um, who did bad things. They put people who did bad... Oh, Gary? Are you in here? <laughs> My name is Victor Kidson and we're here in Jönköping, Sweden actually. I'm with Mr. Gareth Weston. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Today's a good day. Nerve wracked, but good. How do you feel for for the interview? It's good. This um this Swedish water you've gave me is quite strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh you got here uh, yesterday. I picked you up at the airport and we got um got a tour of the city actually. Uh how did you like it? It was it was a lot different than what I expected. Um I mean the the actual, the place itself, you come, you, we're sitting here now, obviously the cameras are going to pick up what's behind me. I mean, it's just, it's awe-inspiring and it's very creative. So you really should think about producing because if you could sit at the, where I've just been sitting before, the ideas would just roll. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place. And we're actually right on, on my porch here. So we've got a beautiful view over the lake. We're going to take a drive up north uh, by the lake a little bit later. And um, I'm going to show you even more beautiful stuff. Um, this is, yesterday was actually the first time we met, right? Yeah, I think um, first time we've met properly in person and also sober. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because we almost met at Lumi Beach a couple of years ago. First time I heard about you, <laughs> Darren Porter came up to me and he said, have you seen Gareth? I was like, who? Have you seen Gareth Weston? I was like, no, I haven't seen him. Why? I don't know where he is. But where uh, were you? What happened that, that time? <clears throat> Well, it, it took a lot of discovering because I wasn't entirely sure. The, the last thing I remember was um, Will Atkinson set, and this was also the first time I'd met Jay Stobel. And we kind of hit it off straight away, and he started spinning me around his head like a helicopter, as as you do. And we just ended, we ended up at a party at a, a flat in, in central Amsterdam, and things just escalated from there pretty quickly. But I think generally what happens is if, if I'm out and someone is kind of enjoying themselves as I am, then I, I just kind of, sometimes I kind of drop the responsibilities and I just go somewhere. And that gets me in trouble a lot of times. <laughs> but, but it was fun. It was a really good, it was a really good party. I wasn't really, um, as we'd never met in person before, I wasn't really nervous because I know that you're good friends with um, James Hulis, Darren Porter, Manuel Saw, and Ronnie Kay. Yeah. And that's a good, that's a good thing. And then I know you're a good guy, I guess. So I asked some of them for uh, <clears throat> for some information about the interview. A lot of stuff is stuff that I can't really talk about. <laughs> <laughs> How do you respond to that? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, obviously myself, Manny, Darren, and James when we were in um, when Australia. That, I mean, that was that was an incredible experience. Most of that stays off record as well because it was just so random. But. Um, no, I, well, again, we're Ronnie. I mean, like, most of them people were at my, my wedding. I mean, like, James come from Australia, Ronnie came over from London, Darren came over as my best man, and, and Manny couldn't make it because of work. So it was, it, it's a, an amazing friendship that's came just through music and what we, what we love and what we do. We could all follow the wedding. We saw some beautiful, amazing photos from the wedding as well. What was it like? It was... Well, I guess the the whole day, the experience was, it sounds strange to say, but it was actually really new to me because because I was in Saudi, I, I kind of just sent the money home and Kate organized it. You know, I, I was asking James for wedding advice. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> and and James just kind of said, look, it's her day. It, that That's what every girl's dream. You're just there to kind of make it happen and be part of it. But anything she wants, you don't disagree. You just say, yes, dear. That's how I've stayed married to, to Thelma's wife, just yes, dear. And 
it was it was kind of frustrating in one sense being away and watching Kate go through the stress, but also it was I knew that everything she wanted she was going to get. She wouldn't. I mean, this time she said to me, sent me a photo. What do you think of this? And and I kind of raised an opinion. And she's like, well, it's done now. And I'm like, yes, dear. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, but to get to the wedding and see all my friends, my family, see Kate walk down the aisle, um, it was it was so nerve wracking because I don't generally get nervous at them sort of things. And I was I was talking to Darren on the morning. We, I'm having a few beers, like for nerves, you know. And I was like, I'm not nervous. And everyone was like, you should be nervous at your wedding. And I'm like, I'm not. And there's, there's a great photo the photographer got where me and Darren are standing at the front waiting for Kate to walk down the aisle. And then all of a sudden, I, I, my hands, everything just started leaking. And I was, I'm standing wiping my hands and wiping my brow. And I'm like, wow, this is just kicking in now as Kate's walking down the aisle. <laughs> but but it, was, it was amazing. They, they all put me at ease. And, and then, you know, we, we had the ceremony. And then, and then the, the wedding night started. And that's when the... We, we all know what happened. What happened with the first track? <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about about that track. It was a beautiful gift, right? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've known Ronnie. I, I mean, we were we were talking yesterday about you know how we met, and, and it's all just through music and through through finding finding someone you connect with. And I've got on so well with Ronnie. He gives me advice on on music. You know, he's a master and engineer. And I, I thought, you know, he, he has to come to the wedding. He's just such a lovely bloke, him and Natalia, his wife. So I invited a lot of people, and half of them I didn't expect to come with Bloomy and things being on. And, and Ronnie, he was, like, like, humbled that I'd asked him. And over the months as I came to the wedding, he said, I'm, I'm going to get you a special gift. And I said, oh, brilliant. But then I started to dig more to find out what this gift was. What it could be, right? What it could be. And he... He started telling me about in the, the Czech Republic and I think Russia, they have a tradition where they kidnap the bride and they take them to a pub and the, the groom has to go and hunt for them, you know. And I, I kind of warned him a little bit that if you do this, this may not go well because Kate won't understand the tradition. And if she's just dragged out of the wedding over someone's shoulder and into a car, this could go amazingly wrong. So I told Kate to have a little dig just to, to make sure that wasn't going to happen. And sure enough, it didn't. So we, we had the meal, everyone kind of went for a few hours rest, and we came back down. And, you know, my, my, my mother, father, my auntie, my grands, and, and all the kids, all the family are all sitting, expecting the first dance. Usually where it's a real romantic slow dance, and you just look into each other's eyes, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Kate's, like, looking at me, and I'm looking, thinking, what, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, I just heard, like, bass just pure like 145 bpm i think bass and then this vocal going bacon 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 <laughs> garrity wesson and i was like what and, and ronnie and kate are looking at me going like this and i'm like what was in that wine <laughs> like so what? but as, as a gift i mean how how can you how can you top that for being unique and it was it was an amazing gesture and obviously my dad we, we spoke about my dad being like <laughs> The, the massive fanboy that he is. Yeah, he's a big fan, fan of Ronnie K. He's a huge fan of Ronnie K. So <laughs> half the time me and Kate are, are, are saying hello to guests and uh, congratulations us on the wedding. And I'm looking for my dad and he's just like just standing stargazed looking at Ronnie K's eyes. <laughs> Bless him. So we got so many photos with Ronnie. Was, I'm sure if you set them against how many you got of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm happy that the wedding was good and that you had your friends there. Yeah. What, was the, what was the stag party like? <laughs> mm. Well, the the stag party in my mind it was it was amazing. It was it was going to be fantastic. Leave Saudi, go to go to Prague, you know, go to Transfusion, the massive event, all your friends there, just incredible. But um, things went a little wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, mean <laughs> I know I know I don't help myself sometimes, but. The odds, the odds of this happening were just ridiculous. I mean, I, I went to the Saudi airport, uh, to the Bahrain airport. You know, I, I knew there were sandstorms, and sometimes that grounds your flight, so I got there early with the best intentions. So I got there early, but I went to the lounge, and the lounge is obviously unlimited spirits and food. <laughs> so I had, I had a couple of, couple of beers, a couple of glasses of wine, and I'm sitting waiting, and my flight gets delayed for half an hour, so I had another glass of wine and again, and so on and so forth. And I was obviously, I'd been up from five in the morning, so I'm really tired, and I just remember lying back in the chair thinking, you know, they take your boarding pass when you come in, so they're going to come and wake me up if I do fall asleep. 
the next thing I know, there's just a little little pat in my leg, and this lovely, lovely, polite woman says, "Are you Mr. Weston?" And I say, "Oh yeah, it's me, my, my flight." So yeah, your, your flight's gone. <laughs> I was like, "Good, okay." And you woke me up because because why? <laughs> was was I snoring? <laughs> so she she wakes me up, and we try to organise another flight to Dubai to go to Prague. But because of the the sandstorms, the the flights had been stopped until later, and. I was talking to Darren all the way through it, you know, my best man, the guy who sort of stacked you out. And he, he's about to turn up to a hotel booked in Gareth, in my name. And it was, it, I mean, I couldn't have got to Prague until early Saturday. I would have been up 48 hours. I would have been just, you know, a complete mess. So I decided just to just to go home and spend the extra time with Kate. When I rang Kate at like five in the morning, she was like, what, what's wrong? Because she knows that something always <laughs> happens when I ring her. She, she's terrified to answer the phone. And I was like, yeah, um, you know, I've, I've missed my flight. She's like, what, what on, how, how have you done this? And I was like, but I'm coming home to see you, thinking this is like a really nice surprise. And she's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, oh, man. So, so yeah, so Darren, Darren loaded it up at the hotel as Gareth Weston. <laughs> then, um, and I ended up getting three flights, feeling really sorry for myself going home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you are like a lot of people know. You are working in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. What is it that you do? I work. Um, I work on a, like a commissioning and startup of a, a chemical plant. I mean, it's the, the project itself is incredible. It's it's one of the biggest or the biggest of its size ever undertaken. So to be part of it and to see it come from the ground, the ground up. I mean, literally desert to to what it's becoming now and what it will be is just it's spectacular. I mean. The, it's incredible. So, I mean, when this when this project actually gets up and running, to say that I was I was there and I helped start and and make it run will it, it's an, it'll be an amazing achievement for for me. Something to be really proud of. How does it work with with your friends and with your wife when you're in, in Saudi Arabia right now? Or right now you're in Sweden, but how does it work? It's 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 difficult. I mean, it's difficult for for me and for Kate. I mean, that's the the hardest part. You know, you you've been away. You've been away from your family. You've been away from your your wife now, you know. I mean, like now we're married. It's they ask people ask you know how does how does married life feel? It's it's weird for me because it's it's exactly the same. I'm I'm in a different country. I'm I'm away from her. We we Skype and talk, but it's it's not the same. You know, when you go home and you you, you go for like the walk through the lakes and things together, you you feel kind of married. But when you when you're away from your friends and your family, it's it's difficult. But you know, the world's moved on a lot since people were working away 10, 20 years ago. You know, you can you can Skype, you can WhatsApp, you can you can still stay in touch, but the the contact that you have with your friends and your family when you're back home, you you miss it so much when you're away. And I think sometimes what it's shown me is, you know, it's great to to spend time with your friends and family, but when you're doing it, you don't kind of appreciate. You don't really appreciate it. I mean, when I go home now and I see my dad or I see my gran, you know, all I want to do is just give everyone like, a bear hug or a cuddle. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's made me kind of like, like it's, I wouldn't say an emotional wreck, but it's really got me like more tuned into what I have and what you've got in front of you, you know. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this for, for me and Kate, you know, it's helping us, it's paving the way for our future. So it's a, it's a necessary evil. Hopefully it's not as long, it doesn't go on as long as it might do, but... <laughs> You know, it, it, the longer it goes on, the, the more it helps. So it's it's trying to balance the two. But you know, if, yeah, sorry. If, if I could, if I could find a way to ship Pedro over, I'd I'd bring him over. <laughs> <laughs> how does uh, how does music work for you in Saudi Arabia? It's it's difficult with um, the main thing. I was like we were just saying in there when I'm showing you the new track is I'm so used to having monitor speakers now. Not having monitors, it doesn't sound like a major problem because you've got headphones, but Everything sounds different in headphones compared to monitors, and um, you know I, I try and work on music as much as I can. But I, you know I, I work long hours. I work a lot of days a week, and sometimes the, the creativity you build yourself up all week, thinking I can't wait to sit on Cubase on Friday. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and then you wake up like you have a lie in. You get up and you think. Mm. You, you go to the gym. You go for a swim. You you know the, the creativity for me. Creativity has to come like like that you can't force it and if you sit in front of a, a sequencer and you try and force it you'll get you'll get nothing you'll get something that you don't really want you know and, and it, for me the, the best way I'm gonna have to look at it is it, it could be when I get in from work and I could have plans to go to the gym or go for some food or do something but if, if I feel feel right bang do the the music so I've been working on this new track I mean it's best part of a month but 
I don't have the time off to work like I used to, but now I'm finding it I'm finding it much more of a release and I'm finding so much more freedom in what I write because I, I don't have that um, I don't have the <clears throat> the pressure on to, to release every three months or every few months on a massive label. I can just sit back, I can just enjoy it. And, you know, I mean, it, it, everything goes in, in phases. I, I could do this project in Saudi, I could go home in a few years' time, land a job where I have a lot of time off, then I could get back into where I was. But for now, I just want to just think about why I, I, why I started writing music, why I just started enjoying it. You know, I mean, I started this whole this music production thing about eight years ago on on a copy of Propellerhead's Reason, writing Hard House, and he was sitting, sitting with a four beat, and a, not an offbeat bass, and I, I was I was absolutely certain that they, that was me for life. I was going to be on a yacht in ten years, <laughs> playing Hard House, yeah. <laughs> and everything progresses, and sometimes you have lulls where you just take a little bit of time away, and I guess that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm concentrating more on my career and my life, but I'm never going to let music go. But it, it's it's good to get your priorities right, and for me, music's becoming more of a hobby, more of like something I'm just doing as a release and enjoying. If, if I go back full time, then I, I will. But but that also gives you more musical freedom, right, in producing exactly what you want to produce. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's with this track I'm on now. I mean, I, I spoke at length, like you say, with Darren. I, he's he's very very good at, with at giving me advice. Or we we talk so much about music. It's it's beyond nerdy, you know. But we can sit for hours on Skype and just. Just sit, sit on a keyboard, just sit with like a, a VST opener. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And and we talk and talk. And the one thing I've I've been doing with this new track, like like you heard, is the bass line. And for me, I was I've listened to a lot of classic trance lately. Just just stuff that brings a real smile to my face, the old crasher stuff and and things like that. And it always strikes me that I'm nodding my head to a bass line. And these the, the, the triplets, the driving bass lines at the minute. Um. I want to just try something different. I want to. I, don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm never going to use them. It's just that I just want to make myself smile when I'm doing it. And the, the, these bass lines, sometimes, I mean, God, I, c I could never play a bass guitar, but when I can put it in a sequencer, I can kind of get some funky sort of stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you said, I actually got an exclusive uh, listen to your latest track, the follow-up to Tro Trojan, and uh, it's not the final name, but the project name is called Bacon Thirteen, right? Yeah, and. It has a different approach. It doesn't follow any um, any uh, like guidelines of a track these days. It's kind of a fresh approach to it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you think, I think like like you say, we did the Curiosity for Prominence, which was like a, a big uplifter, but it also had that darkness and like I like my dark, like the dark sounds going into a like I like the contrast of that. And Trojan started out as. It just started out as a as a bit of a giggle, you know. Just I like to do that. I like to just try ideas that you really should shouldn't do, you know, and and, and just see how it goes from there. And, and Trojan, I sat and I just thought, I did the the melody and I really liked it, and then I tried the main section with the melody and I, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, it's okay, but it's it's not. I'm not sitting going wow, so I I put like a like a, a hard sort of drop in, and then I thought I'll go into the melody. But I tried that, and, and yeah, that sounded kind of, it was good, the contrast was good. And I just thought, you know, what if we just flip this completely, completely on its head and go from hard to ridiculous? So, and that, that was it. It, it, it just literally, I, I went to the, to the absolute far end of stupid. And, and then, obviously, the melody comes back in, which is the, the whole idea of a Trojan. You know, you've, you've got the Trojan horse, you've got the surprise inside, the Trojan horse goes through the gates and then bang out, everything comes. And that was the idea of the track. And yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't believe when the feedback it got. I mean, the, the support it got, like tires today, sort and things like that. It was, I was like, wow. <laughs> and it was something new as well. It was a new approach to it. Mm. And um, I think a lot of people loved the, the drawing that you did as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you know as well as I do, most people that, that know me can, can appreciate that. I, I take everything with a pinch of salt. I love to laugh. I love. I love to have uh, just fun and just. And if that means making myself look like a complete banana, then then so be it. I mean, be, because like you say, I'm just enjoying the music and I'm, I'm taking my time and I'm just relaxing. Then sometimes you know I write my posts because you have to. You have to say promote yourself. It, it's not. It sometimes it's not comfortable, but you have to do it. It's a job, and but so, sometimes even. With writing the track, I was being a bit daft, and then it come to promoting it. And I thought, you know, do I want to stick a a photo of the of the track, the cover, and please buy my track? 
And I just thought, you know what? And I, I drew the, the worst Trojan, by the way. I mean, that someone said, "Is it a wolf?" <laughs> so, so I had Gareth Weston, age thirty-six, and it was a thirty-five at the time. I don't know, but I'm, I'm older than fourteen, so it looked it looked a bit daft. I mean, the cover when it, when it was Titanium that signed it, and you know, you, you see everyone's covers and the artwork it's all so serious and so so like dark and evil and amazing and and darren sent me the artwork for Tro for Trojan. it was just a toy horse and i was he was like is that too silly we're not gonna we're not gonna do that really and i was like no do it <laughs> i was like just do it you know? um you and darren have a very very strong friendship as well yeah, yeah. um but you actually he was he's from the uk as well you're from pretty close to each pretty other close, right yeah, yeah but you didn't meet in the uk no um no, <laughs> which is really strange that we have such a, a close bond. And so, I mean, he was best man at my wedding, you know, so we're, we're really, really close. But I guess we've only known each other four years, maybe something like that. And and then um, we met. I mean, I, I'd, he did a track and he had a label at the time and I was just getting into producing. So I sent him a track and we started talking and, you know, then we realized that we lived. We used to live close and things. So we, we got talking and. I used to have a lot of time off on my shifts then, and I think I think he threw it out just kind of as a just an idea. He said, "You know, let's let's get together and work on a track. That would be really cool, you know." And I said, "Yeah, sure." And he was still in Germany. You were in the UK. He's yeah. in Germany with Anya, and um, I was like, "Yeah, brilliant." You know, I'm I'm not at work for five days. Sure. So I emailed him the next day and said, "I've got my my train down to London and my flights to to Leipzig." And he was like, "Sorry," and I was like, "You, you said we could work on a track." And he's like. Yeah, but, and I was like, great, okay. <laughs> I think that completely threw him. But, but we sat and um, we, we did, that's when we did Tesla Effect. And uh, it, was, it was great because obviously Darren, I mean, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but now I know what it's like to live away in a different country. So for me to go there and we, we just sat and we just had, we had a, a good laugh and, you know, we'd never produced before, we'd never done anything like that. So, but we worked so well because we're both northern lads, but also it was just, it was nice for him that I was there. I think. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just turned up and slept on his couch. <laughs> yeah, I want some breakfast. <laughs> and um yeah, I mean we, we did Tesla and then we went to then we went to Prague, yeah. So it was it was really cool and that was the start of the start of everything. But we, we had such fun together and and then we, we've done, you know, tracks together, we've been clubbing or DJ together, so yeah. <laughs> Strange way to start a friendship. <laughs> what does uh what does breakfast look like uh for you in Prague? In Prague? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a specific time I hear. <laughs> oh, right. I was, I was like, did you mean to say Saudi there? Yeah, Prague. Um, Prague depended on the company. I mean, you know... Let's say you're with Darren. With Darren? Um, and it's seven in the morning. Am I with Jace? Yeah, probably. Yeah, then... then um, well, it, you know, I'm a big believer in fruit for breakfast. You know, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, everyone likes the bacon, but um, sometimes you've just got to keep it healthy. Good start of the day, fresh skin, you know, and... Um, a 16 euro melon appeared after, at this after Lumi, and me and Jace were still awake, um, still very, very, very drunk, and we decided, we, you know, as you, as you should do at a party, you should look after everyone, we, we decided to carve the melon, put it into bowls, and, and take it to the, the other guests at the party, <laughs> and then, then we were left with a carved out melon. I mean, I've been brought up not to waste, and... <laughs> then, 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 I mean, yeah, just make a hot one. <laughs> and uh, in Prague, I hear that you go for beer instead of melon. Um, Prague, like a lot of beers, I heard. I've, I've, I think I've been to Prague a few times. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Jesus, I mean, one of the. Oh God, that was was that. I'm trying to think which party this was. This was transfusion. <laughs> yeah, this is this is where this this ah. I don't, I don't even know if you've heard this. this is I have. I, I have a specific story. Have you heard the, the bridge? The bridge and the salad? Is this what we're going for here? I'm not sure. Oh, we can do that oh as well. God. <laughs> this, this, I, left, I left Transfusion and Darren had played last one, Manny. And I was trying to get Darren's attention. But he, he was obviously talking to, to people who'd, who'd been there for the set. And I just kind of wandered out of the club. And it was brilliant sunshine. It was seven in the morning. And I thought, I can, I can do this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown man. I can get back to the hotel, no problem. For hours, I walked through Prague. I was certain that I'd gone over a bridge to get there in a taxi, and I ended up going to a supermarket. I bought a, a I needed food, you know, so I, I bought a, a box of salad. 
box of salad with some dressing. I was, I was sitting on this bridge in Prague. <laughs> Tourists walking past. I mean, I think the event finished at 7 in the morning. This must have been 9 in the morning. I'm sitting still with, like, my clothes on. I've been to the club with my jacket. I'm sitting with a box of salad with no fork. They didn't give you a fork, which is cruel. So I'm sitting with my honey and mustard dressing and my salad, and I'm just sitting on the bridge like this. I eventually got back to the hotel at 11 in the morning. My mate was like, where the hell have you been? I'm like... I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I need sleep. <laughs> I kind of feel sorry for you right now. Um, we had a discussion before about Tesla Effect. Yeah. When you guys finished it, because it was a very successful track. Mm. But what happened when you got the uh, the royalty statements and stuff like that? I, I think when, when me and Darren did the track, you know, we, we got it signed and, and it had massive support. And I, I think it... it um, Every time, I, every time I listen to it, or I still get messages from people who play it, and you know they they say they really enjoy the track and it makes them it makes it re them really uplifted. And um, me and Darren spoke about it, and we were like, we're really looking forward to the royalties. I mean, you know, obviously I was I was really naive at the time. Darren more had more the business head, but I was like, you know, I'm I'm sitting planning vacations and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking at that motorbike I've always wanted and things like that. And then the royalty statement come through, and and I think that's when I I got to realise that that. It, it kind of, although it had a negative effect at first, it had a positive effect because then I realized that, look, you can either do this and, and have all these ideas that you're, you're going to make this and make this money and do this. But for me, it, that that was the one that kicked me into touch and said, right, you either focus on music or you focus on your career and your, and your family. And the, the way the music is now, I mean, we, we spoke in, in the car yesterday about vinyl and, and CDs and, and, and MP3. And the thing is now, the, 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 you, you can't, it's very not that you can't it's very hard to make a living off music like financially you have to do so much there's so much more than just sitting right in a track selling it making your money there's more aspects which me and you both know but um you know i'm, I'm getting on i'm not as young as i used to be so <laughs> i think i think if i ever said to to kate and um that you know i'm coming back from saudi i think i can make this work and sit in front of cubase it would be the quickest wedding <laughs> the quickest marriage ever and the royalties wasn't that as good as you were hoping. No, I mean, if 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 you let's just say if you can't go to the shop with your royalties and buy a pack of cigarettes and four cans of lager, then you know there's something there's something wrong. And and I couldn't. That when I got it through, I just kind of laughed. I thought they must have missed some zeros off or something. But it, the money just got swallowed up. And and the other thing is that obviously it gets downloaded from different sites. And I mean. Even with Trojan, for example, when Trojan got released, on the day, I went on to Google at, at 12 noon, I went on to Google, I typed in Gareth Weston Trojan, and the first link that come, that come up wasn't Beatport. It was uh, a file sharing. And you just, you've just got to accept it. Someone buys it, wants to some, like, get popular, so they'll, they'll upload it and put like a bit of advertising for them or whatever, and it happens, you can't stop it. So you, just, you don't let it get here. You just draw daft pictures of wolves on wheels <laughs> next to a castle. <laughs> It didn't work. Maybe I should be more professional. People would have bought it. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> where does um, where does your nickname Beaker come from? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's from someone you know really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you put this one in, did he? That'll be that'll be James. That'll yeah. be James Willis, my um, my esteemed wedding guest from Australia, <laughs> who who um, who instantly fell out with my wife. With them. Oh, yeah. yeah, because um, he, he travelled a long way across a lot of time zones to come to the wedding. And because I got back from Saudi the night before the wedding, the day before the wedding, you know, Kate obviously expected me to spend time with her, as I believe is right. <laughs> but I had a choice to make. Kate was going to the, to the hotel to get ready with the girls. James Hulis was landing at Newcastle Airport. I mean, I was torn. I was like, you know, I love Kate. James is a great guy. <laughs> you know, like, who's going to be angrier here? And at, at the end, I had to, I had to make the right choice and stay with Kate. But James, I heard James coming up the stairs with Darren when when they'd got him from the airport, and I was expecting a big hug and a bit of love, like you know, it's so good to see you. And he was like, "You, what? Why weren't you there at the airport?" <laughs> so yeah, so um, he he got the the Beaker nickname, and rather cruelly, he's he's kind of pushed it onto his kids. So when I was when I was in Australia with James, I was I was like kind of babysitting through the week doing some music and just looking after these two kids who were great. And 
And he keeps saying to them, there's Uncle Beaker. And he keeps going, meep, meep, meep. So whenever, whenever I Skype James on a Friday, I've got, I've got Alicia, the two pens in the background going, meep, meep, meep. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is your fault. <laughs> Yeah, the mad scientist. I don't, I don't know if you must have seen it on Facebook. Whenever, whenever me and Darren stop talk about working on a track, James always puts a photo up of Beaker and the mad scientist, the two together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but James also told me that um, you're a fantastic guy as well and that you're also very curious on how stuff works and you're actually... He, I, I think he had some trouble confessing this, but he said that you were pretty smart as well. I'm not sure where this one's going. <laughs> Pretty smart. I've just tried to open your door and I couldn't figure out the push up part. <laughs> I couldn't open the boot of your car yesterday. Come on. That is true, actually. Yeah, but you must have your moments, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty smart. I mean, you know, I mean, I, well, the industry I work in, you've got to be reasonably clever, but um, I'm terrified of this one. <laughs> He's what he said. <laughs> I, um, yeah, some of the stuff that he said we're not going to be able to use, but... Surprise. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but he also told me that you had some dental problems when you were in Melbourne. <laughs> and uh, he wanted me to ask you what time you were going to the dentist. Yeah, this, this um, <laughs> well, actually, I've just been to the dentist when I was back in the UK, and they, they, they mentioned the same thing. Before I went to Australia, I had a bit of, bit of toothache, but nothing... Then I thought a couple of paracetamol and a couple of glasses of wine wouldn't sort it out. So I see my dentist in the UK he said, yeah, just just go away and when, when you come back, we'll, we'll have a look at it. And I got over to Australia and it was giving me some real trouble. And it was it was at the point we were going to Sydney, and James being James, you know, like, I mean, we were sitting on the boat, on the, on the ferry over to Manly, I think it is, going past the Sydney, the harbour, and I, I couldn't even look at the opera house because the, the pain was so bad. And I, I said to James, rather stupidly, I said, James, like, this is so bad, I need something to take the pain away. And he just gave me the hardest punch I've ever had on my leg. And I was like, what was that for? And he was like, does your face hurt? And I'm like, no. And he's like, see? I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. So we ended up, we had to, we had to go to a dentist. And obviously, like, as, as I always play the jokes and I play the pranks, sometimes people just don't take me seriously. I said to James and Darren, uh, I said, like, you know, I've got an appointment booked with your dentist, and, and, and I think they're going to extract us. And he said, what time? And I was like, 2.30. And it's like, it's like one of the oldest, like, party jokes you get out of a cracker. What time do you go to the dentist? 2.30. 2.30. And, and they wouldn't believe me. And I was like, no, seriously, my appointment's at 2.30. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we're not taking you. We've got stuff to do. And I'm like, 2.30? I have to go at 2.30. <laughs> so I, I went into this Australian dentist. It was a Dutch guy, and he, he just took an x-ray, and he just said... Um, yeah, that, that's going to have to come out. Are you familiar with um, the, 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 the movement and what we do when we take your teeth out? I was like, yeah, I've had, I've had quite a few out. He said, okay, <laughs> out he goes. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> but you actually did have the same kind of hair, like the beaker, right? Yeah, um, I mean, that was, that was a while ago. That? I was young and daft. You know, I'm, I'm so sensible now, you know, with the, the boy band here. Yeah. Which Kate loves. <laughs> no, I mean, when I was, when I was younger, I, I mean, I had... I had flame red hair. I, I'm not sure why. Um, it wasn't natural, right? It wasn't natural. No, it was it was heavily synthetic. <laughs> and um, I, I went to I went to China from Thailand on holiday, and I thought it would be an amazing idea as, as a gesture to the, the culture because I know they love the the color red and the number eight, my, both my favorite things. So I, I went with flame red hair, but what I hadn't banked on was the bacon sun in the in Thailand. But by the time I got back to England, I had flame orange hair. So it had it, gone from this, like, big red rooster sort of hair to this burnt-out orange. I mean, I came, I came through arrivals, and then my mum and dad were like, what the hell's happened to him? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's where the, the, the bigger thing also come from, and that, this is where, that's where Manny got hold of the, the photo, where uh, I, I'd have, I can't even explain why I was sitting in a kind of pink shirt with flame orange hair in, in close to me, but Manny got hold of it when I was in Australia, and we, we started talking about it, and he, he tortured me for that photo. <laughs> Rightly so, but... <laughs> Did he put it online, or...? Yeah, I mean, we were, we were in the, the same hotel, and we were, we were above each other on floors, and I, I'd found an old hard drive. And it had these photos on. So, you know, it, it, late at night, we're both just bored and just having that kind of laugh. And I, 
I said, here, here's, here's something to cheer you up. I said, look at this. And I sent him the photo. And I think I was, I was in a restaurant, so I had, like, a really high-collared shirt, kind of buttoned undone down here. And I had this, like, orangey-red hair. And he, he just, he fell about the place. And he was like, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to post this on Facebook. And I was like, no, don't. And he said, no, seriously, I really want to see what happens here. <laughs> so he, he did it. And it, it went, I mean, it went crazy. I mean, we, we couldn't, the notifications, the, the, and the abuse, but it was friendly abuse, you know what I mean? It's just like people having a, a laugh. And, and I always say, if you can't take the, 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 the mick out of yourself, you, you shouldn't, you don't have a right to do it. So I, I usually set myself up for some of these. <clears throat> but there was a, the other photo, uh, how, how do I drop myself in this one? I was, do, I was getting a pedicure, a manicure, sorry. I was in Thailand, you know. And, and I was sitting like this with my hands, I had my Liverpool shirt on and I had my bright head hair and, and I, I sent that one to Manny. And we were WhatsApping on Facebook at the time, we were too lazy to go downstairs. Or, so this time we didn't even Facebook or WhatsApp, I just heard the door open, I heard him screaming. He was like, bro! And I was like, yeah, he was like, this has to go on Facebook. I was like, no, this one doesn't, this one's just too much. It went up. And... <laughs> <laughs> and that was that, but but that's that's money. I mean, that's that's why we get on uh, like with with Ronnie and Darren. I mean, with money, you know, it's it's. I don't look at them or these guys or like yourself as like kind of DJs or interviewers anymore. I just look at them as friends. And and money, we we have such an absolute laugh together. And like, I mean, he came to he came to Middlesbrough to play February before I went to Saudi, and and me and me and Kit went to the to the gig. I got him his I got him his branded T-shirt, which you've probably seen. And and I expected him just to take it away, you know, just kind of, yeah, thanks. But he went straight to the toilet and put it on. That's the sort of bloke he is, you know. He's at a gig, you know, and he knows he's going to be photographed and he just puts this crazy daft T-shirt on. And I was like, I was like, wow. <laughs> but you, you bounce off people like that. You have fun with them and that's, that's what it's about. So we have, um, we're in Sweden, like we said before. We have a pretty good day uh, before us as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to go up north, drive about 30 minutes from here and take a ferry over to an island which is called Vising Sø and we'll get you some um, we'll get you guys some footage and some videos and some stuff from that as well so you get to see what uh, what we're up to. Ferry's coming in. We need to run to catch it. Yeah. We're just here at the most remarkable place ever. Yeah, just looking at the a sunset or whatever, it doesn't end. It's been yeah. perfect. Yeah, absolutely, just absolutely incredible, incredible day. Too many highlights, which I'm sure we're going to see in the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're about to head back to uh, mainland to um, to get one of the best burgers in the world. Actually, there's that, there's a couple over there. They're just like, <laughs> and they're looking at us, wondering <laughs> what they're doing. There they are again. <laughs> the, the freaks, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>